Louisiana Beer Review Spindle Tap Candy Green Double India Pale Ale. I'm sitting under the porch, screened in porch because it's too windy out there. It'll interfere with the audio like it did in a few other previous, few other previous videos. They obviously previous if I've done them already. Uh, anyway, um, this is from Houston, Texas, on Hirsch Road. I have to look that up. Independent Craft Brewery, one of the newer ones here. Especially for Louisiana, they just started showing up Spindle Tap. And they specialize in hazy beers, they say on the website. Uh-oh, guys. The date is... Did not print out. I don't know how old this is. All I see is it, it's kind of crunched together and says, I want candy. Wrapped in a sweater. No, wrapped in a adhesive label. This is not listed on their website. There are not enough it, uh, written reviews on Beer Advocate and Rape Beer to give a score. Untapped is giving it an 80. Two, which is high for untap. There is one video review. I can't remember the name of the channel, but I intend to watch it. I already put it on my watch later list. Yeah, it was expensive. I bought it at Matherns. Uh, a lot of these local Louisiana and Texas and Mississippi micro brews are mighty expensive, and some of them are mighty good. A lot of them are. Mediocre. All right, anyway, but, you know, we get some good ones. Having this little cognac glass. But you can get the picture. It's hazy. We know what hazy IPAs look like. It looks like um, unfiltered juice. Unfiltered pineapple juice, yeah. Milky yellow. Off-white head. Uh, it's getting to the point like I can't tell them one from the other with a lot of these double India, India Pale Ale hazies. Eight, they're all like 8%. Some of the Imperials will be, they say 9 to 11, but uh, usually about 8. All right, well, let's check it out. Be open-minded here. Yeah, it smells like the others. Um, fruity hop resin, lupulin powder. Uh, white bread, <laughs> nothing unusual, nothing bad. Cheers. Now I saw Total Wine had Hetty Topper. I did a solo review and then a duo review and then another solo follow-up review. Gave it a 98 each time so it was consistent, like tastes the same. And um, so Total Wine had it, not here, but at some of their stores way away from here. They had it for $16.99 or four pack. And that's what these run around 16 to 18. Six yeah. At the low end, $16, high end, $18. Uh, four pack. 16 ounce cans. But this is much less intense than a heady top. Like that one is like full bore hot bitterness. Bold. A lot of sweetness from the malt. A lot of intensity. A lot of excitement. Um, this one has oh, nice lacing. A little bit of excitement. <laughs> Bitterness. I would think low. I bet you it's about 45. And then there's that meatiness. I don't know why these things taste like some kind of meat. <laughs> Canned. Roasted. Broiled. Fried. Grilled. Corned. I don't know. Uh, body is um, not too heavy. Um, I would say at the most medium, and in some ways, it seems hard to believe. Hard, hard to believe, but a little, a little thin. But not that's not bad. That might make it more drinkable. Let's go into one good thing about the cognac glass. You take little sips. You know it's going to have sediments. No use even concerning yourself with that. Now, it's not going to be that chunky sediment like the Heady Topper, which my friend David said, Ugh. and he, he wasn't impressed with that beer. And I said, you want to take a can? 
I was going to give him a can. Take a can to go home and drink. No, he said, I don't want that. I said, what about the, the uh, narwhal barrel age? You know, he, he wasn't interested. So low-level bitterness, I'm thinking about 45 at the most IBUs. So on the bitterness scale, eh, about three and a half out of five hop cone sweetness scale. Um, three out of five um, sugar cubes. It's got some strength. That's helping it. The strength is helping it. All right. I'm talking about the alcohol strength. If this thing was six percent, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be too good. It just wouldn't have any character. It's kind of lacking in character now. Um, like so many of these, I'll tell you one that was really good. Hazy DIPA. I bought it on the highway. Well, not actually on the highway, but at, at, at a convenience store gas station at a highway exit <laughs> off the main interstate in uh, Interstate 81 in Tennessee on the northbound side of on the, on the uh, southbound side of the highway on the but the north side as it's turning that way. But um, that was called Beer Hug, I think. Beer hug from Goose Island, nine percent. Well, that was a great one, and it was a 19.2 ounce stove top. I was a little detached after drinking it. I will say that, but um, it was fabulous. This one's nice. I mean, but if you gave it to me, what I was trying to get to early, if you gave this to me line and said, what do you think it is? I would think it was Imperial Pale Ale. Yes. Dale's Pale Ale, much more bitter than this. And that's a Pale Ale, but it's really an IPA. And this is, say, it's an IPA, but to me it's more like an Imperial Pale Ale. But maybe it didn't work out for them, and that's why it's not listed on the website. And they just figured, oh, let's drop it. Candy Green. Candy Green. Mo Green. Anne of Green Gables, something. I don't know. I'm wearing green and gold. Um, and black. Um, all kidding aside, I would like to go to Hirsch Road. I think I know where that is. It used to, well, I remember seeing the road. I can look it up. Be no problem there. Um, we went to St. Arnold. That didn't work out so well on the tour. We went to, um, Carbach, that was a very good tour. I went to Anheuser-Busch in Houston back when they gave tours, and that was a fabulous tour, best beer beer tour, brewery tour I ever went on. Of course, I had to pay $35, so <laughs> that'd be good and extensive. But yes, I intend to go to this place, but I think it's more like a brew pub, like tiny, tiny, like Royal Brewing in New Orleans, something like that. Or second line brewing in New Orleans, but uh, yeah, this is nice. Um, just don't know if it's matching up to what I think of as double India Pale Ale. Mm. So I think it's more like double. I think it's more like a DPA. DPA. So that doesn't help it. I, but I, I, I'm gonna score it a 91, a 9.1 out of 10. It's an A minus. But it's enjoyable, it's mild, there's no like nasty off flavors or aromas, no strange mouthfeel, it's just like a water mouthfeel. The body is light, low medium, and the finish is mostly dry, so uh, yeah, it's it's just uh, like a lot of these things, um, there's so many, they're on the market, on the market, on the market, everywhere, here, there, everywhere, here, today, and you never see them again, but uh, at least there's no funny animals or crazy cartoons on the label and if you know about oil and spindle tap spindle top <laughs> spindle top uh, there I think it was at 190 
five in Beaumont. I think that was the first oil discovery in Texas. But we talk about these beers like I use the term I heard on our sports radio show, upper level mediocrity. So many of these, you pay in national championship prices, but you're getting Citrus Bowl results. Or Liberty Bowl, or... Um, that kind of thing, you know, uh, Peach Bowl. So you, you don't get the, the real... You know, you can't spell citrus without UT. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just... People say, well, I'm tired of this upper-level mediocrity. I'm not tired of it. I just expect it. Uh, everything, you know, A minus A. And then it's always like A9394, not ever A9796, 97. But that's all right. I don't care. I just... You say, well, you mean you just, it's like a hamster in a hamster where you're just going around and around and around. It's the same thing again and again and again and again and again and again. Yeah, but that's all right. <laughs> oh, by golly. Oh, by gosh, by golly. All right, so um, 91 out of 100, and I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all go to Houston, Texas, to Hirsch Road, and tour the Spindle Tap microbrewery.